Okay, so hey everyone. So we are going uh, to start. Sorry, I need to manage this. Ooh. So uh, we are going to start module six, which is called um, function prediction. Um, so uh, so the module was li linked to a pre-recorded. Sorry, yeah, a, a pre-recorded video for Quaid uh, Maurice that I hope you had uh, the opportunity to to view during um, your pre-work. And so we are going to use a software called uh, GeneMania as our functional uh, prediction tool. This tool has been developed a few years ago by Craig Morris in collaboration with Gary Bader, and it is still maintained in the Bader lab at the Donnelly Center. So uh, these slides are just a summary. I don't want to be redundant with the lecture that you viewed, but I know that some concepts you use may be a little bit complicated. So that's why I wanted to review in a few slides, but also wanted to show you as examples as we use uh, GeneMania in our projects. So GeneMania is a functional prediction, function prediction tool designed to answer two questions. So the first one, I have one gene in my query and I want to, to predict the function of this gene. So the question is, what does my gene do? And the other questions, so um, as a query, we have a gene list. So we input a gene list in GeneMania and the question that we would like to answer is give me more genes like those one. So, more genes like the one in my gene list. So we want to expand the gene list. So here in a very short summary, here uh, are some keywords defining gene mania. So gene mania is a functional interaction network. Nodes in the network are genes, uh, proteins, and they are connected by edges if they are functionally associated. So for example, the proteins may be known to physically interact with each other or to belong to the same biological process or known to co-localize. All function networks are merged into one global network and there are weights associated with them. And those networks help to predict the function of the genes and to add to um, relate new genes to the network. And GeneMania is uses the concept of guilt by association to find a gene and networks associated with our genes of interest. Finally, uh, GeneMania is available as a web app or as a Cetoscape app. And we are going to show you uh, both option today. So this slide is a summary of some of the gene mania concepts that we um, have seen in the previous page and in the recorded video. So um, like the puzzle piece are representing the different network. So uh, we can have a network representing the knowledge that we have about protein, protein interaction domain or shared protein domain or genetic interaction, co-localization, co-expression or pathway. And each of these network are, have weight and we combine all of this network into a global network. And we have uh, so the edges represent these uh, different networks and I, I have, are colored by uh, different colors, depending on the network. Um, so label propag propagation can be used to associate a gene. So here's my gene, query gene. So I would say at the beginning it's white because it has no function. And we want to associate this query gene with our existing network. And we are going to use a label propagation for, and a guilt by association. So, um, so this query gene, is not associated with this little cluster, but is associated with this big cluster by one edge, which is, I think, physical interaction is red. So we know that this query gene is known to physically interact with this one, but we don't know the function of this query gene. However, this big, um, this big red nodes here, for those genes, the function is very well known. And we can see that my, um, query gene is then related uh, to these genes with a very known um, function by a lot of interaction. And by label, uh, by label propagation, we are going to guess the function of this new gene. So um, context dependent network, I think that um, there is like one aspect that is sometimes uh, difficult to, uh, to understand is that the there are different weights um, for the network to 
used to measure node connections. And there is an option in Genomania, you can use network weighting or um, automatic or network weighting equal by network. So in order to understand that, we are going to try it in the lab. And um, so by default, Genomania is going to use automatic weighting and uh, is going to um, focus on the biological um, pathway. So this is the blue, I think it's the blue, I don't see very well, uh, like a light blue color or greenish, light blue color, color to, um, to weight the network because the goal is to predict the function and the function is better defined using the biological process um, GoBP from Genotology database. But if you want to have uh, more information about all the networks like uh, physical interaction, pre predicted interaction and so on, you can uh, set the option to equal by network. And then you see the percentages. So that's the percentages that were used to build the network. And uh, so here the pathway was uh, 6.17% um, and reduced to 3.05% uh, when we use the equal by network uh, option. So, so then we are going to solve the examples on how to use it in our project. And so, as I said, we can use Gmania for to query one gene and to um, to guess the function of these genes and to a gene list. So, uh, for one gene. Uh, so, uh, so all those examples are from my own um, project. So I was working with a gene, IPO4, and uh, I didn't know much about this gene because uh, I was just starting the project. So uh, I just entered IPO4 into GeneMania, and this is the network that I, that I had uh, obtained. So uh, it gave me, for example, IPO5, which is um, working with uh, IPO4, and most importantly, it gave me the function predicted by IPO4 and uh, it's pore complex and nuclear pore complex. And indeed IPO4 is an importing and it works, um, there are maybe about 10 importing in the cells and it works especially with IPO5. So uh, it works in uh, to import protein in the nucleus of the cells. So, um, so they bind uh, cargoes like protein that are in the cytoplasm and the role is to import them in the nucleus. So I think that gene media guess uh, the function pretty accurately. So now the next query, uh, I'm going to input two genes. And here, so I was working with these two genes, ZUS12 and, I don't know how to pronounce, ZUS12 and EZH1. And I know, I knew, I knew that those genes were uh, part of the PRC2 complex, so the polycom repressive complex 2. This is a chromatin associated methyl trans transfer transferase. So it's a, it's a group uh, of cells, uh, it's a group of proteins involved in uh, repression. And my goal here was not to guess the function because I knew the function and it was here predicted by gene mania. But uh, my goal here was to retrieve all the other uh, protein part of this complex. And I wanted to do it in a quick way. So what I did, I just uh, input SUS12 and EZH1 into gene mania. And then I retrieve the genes related to that, that. And this is the image of the PRC2 complex. And you can compare um, both of them. And then you can see that the main um, part, the main protein partners of the complex uh, were indeed retrieved by, by uh, gene mania. Then you can see here EED, is it, is it, is it H1, SUS12. Uh, I think Jury 2 is there and RBP4 and 7 are, are there. And I think this one is, uh, is there as well. So what I did is just extract this network to, uh, to further apply my analysis. And then so then and we expand our gene list. So now we are going to create 23 gene lists. So all of them, one query, two query, uh, 20, before that, I was doing this on the GeneMania web app because it's query that are easy to do. Uh, 
uh, and this one is also on the Gene Mania app. But if my query becomes uh, bigger and bigger, then I switch to Cytoscape. Um, so by the design, actually, is the app. So I need to modify this. So that's the Cytoscape uh, web. So I have 23 genes. And those 23 genes, they were um, genes mutated in Alzheimer's disease. So uh, that was uh, SNPs and uh, indels in genes um, from um, Alzheimer patients compared to controlled cases. So 23 genes, so those genes, I didn't know about their function. And because it was not RNA-seq, it was tr not transcriptomics, I did not expect them to be related in a pathway, but I, I didn't know. I was hoping that uh, they were related. I think it's from paper, it's not my project. So uh, I just put them in gene mania and I was surprised to see connection and that's what I was hoping for. So I could see um, really some uh, non-physical interaction between those genes, although the, the, yeah, the pink. And, um, but, and the function also was really uh, correlated to, uh, to neurons. So that was um, good to know that those genes that were just picked up because they were uh, frequently mutated in Alzheimer uh, disease could uh, connect with each other and predict this uh, function. And then, um, so now uh, we have 43 genes. So this is uh, done in Cytoscape um, app because we then, we then can color uh, the network with different colors. So this is a project that was done uh, a few years ago uh, in Gary Bader's lab. And what they had, they had uh, 43 genes involved in cholesterol metabolism related genes. So the genes that they had were the large nodes. And uh, they used GeneMania for, uh, for three reasons. First, they, um, they used GeneMania to get some linker genes. So they had some linker genes, for example, those one are very interesting because they link um, those uh, genes that they had uh, in their in their analysis to other that were not um, connected. So they increased the network by adding linker genes. And now they could also see that by these uh, golden edges that many of the genes were um, sharing um, protein domains. They were related. Uh, by protein domains and the third, um, the third layers, and this is uh, one good aspect of creating a network with cytoscape. So they could overlay that with addition, additional information, which were uh, time points. So red were up regulation in their study, blue were down regulation in their study, and um, they could uh, put as a not center. This is an older version of enrichment map, so uh, gene mania. So they could uh, color the not center by the time point three hours and the not border by the time point 21 hours. And then the last, uh, the last slide should sound, uh, should look like a bit familiar to you because this is uh, how we move from enrichment map to gene mania. So now for sure we are doing this in the Cytoscape app. So we have um, the pathway enrichment map and we have a pathway of interest here. It's non-coding RNA metabolic process. And then we can use gene mania to create a gene gene network. So here a node is a pathway and in gene mania a node is a gene. And then we do that to get more detailed information about a pathway of interest. And here we can see that using gene mania and the function um, function enrichment of gene mania, we could um, detail the pathway into one, two, three, four uh, subgroups of more defined pathways than this uh, most, si most significant node, the non-coding RNA metabolic process could be divided in ribosomal RNA metabolic process, tRNA, DNA template transcription initiation, large ribosome units, 
and we could color the, the nodes so that are now gene based on the um, relative to gene expression. Uh, so as a final slide, um, so gene mania can be, um, so works with a few model organism. If you would work with a non-model organism and you would have to, um, to create uh, this uh, gene function prediction network, then it's possible to do. You can construct um, it with your model organism and uh, gene mania can be used uh, for other uses. So we use it for protein, protein interaction network, but you could take the algorithm and modify it. And it's a work that was done uh, in the lab of Gary Bader by uh, Schroeder Pai. And I think Ruth was working on it as well. So NetDX is a patient classifier. So the networks here are, are different. And um, so that can be used um, to classify patients as well. So it's another option that you can do, but it's an advanced topic because you have to recreate. You take the algorithm, but you have to recreate uh, the database that are behind it. 